They are scenes such as the young Mandela would have known. It is a place of hard margins and hunger. Two thirds of South Africa's poor live here in the rural areas. Under apartheid, families like this were denied any share in their country's prosperity. But for them, liberation hasn't meant dramatic change. Nabuchle's husband died at 48, the average life expectancy for poor people here. A family of eight lives in this single room. Just because we're poor, the sign says, does not mean we are a laughing stock. When my father died, we were hungry, Nabuchle's daughter explains. Now we do the washing for the whole village to earn a living. It's very cold here in winter and the child gets a fever. Under apartheid, whites held the best land. Nelson Mandela promised to transfer 30% of white land to the rural poor. But a decade after he made that promise, only 3% had been given over. However, a majority of rural families now do have access to clean water vital in the fight against disease. In the luxurious suburbs of nearby Umtata, you encounter a very different side of Mandela's legacy. Tembalani Nodada worked his way up from being an office clerk to owning several thriving businesses. Tembalani is now among the 10% of the black population that's classified as middle class. What do you think the greatest gift Mandela gave to you? The freedom of movement, the freedom of doing what you want to do, and the freedom of saying everything is open to you. Go out there, the world is yours. Do you personally feel bitter towards white people because of what happened here? I, I'm, I'm not bitter and uh, I go along with them and I've got friends, white friends, which I go to their houses, they come to my house, and we're a free society. Yet there is a sad irony here. One of Tembalani's most successful companies is this funeral parlor. Many of his customers are families devastated by AIDS. 600 South Africans die every day from AIDS. Preoccupied with the struggle for democracy, Nelson Mandela failed to recognize the urgency of the crisis witnessed by activists like Lulu Bokosa. But Mandela would eventually campaign forcefully. His own son died of AIDS. You know, I'm one of the people he really touched in 2000 when he said this is war that we must win. And uh, that was the time when we had 4,7, 4, 4 million people in South Africa who were HIV positive in 2000. And, in, and uh, actually, even when now he's, uh, he was aware, he became aware that his son was sick, he actually, he actually said, I, I wish we had done something about this even, you know, before. Nelson Mandela fought to achieve equality before the law for his people and in doing so freed them from a mentality of subservience, the sense that they would always be second best to whites. But he also brought them political stability, the stability under which economic and social progress would be possible. And on a continent where liberation has so often been followed by civil war and ethnic conflict, that is no small achievement. <laughs> Fergal Keane, BBC News, Kunu.